Hello again everyone, I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm assembling the Blue Origin New Shepard almost ready to fly model rocket. Now Estes puts out two of these, one's the almost ready to fly kit which this one is and then they also have a builder's kit which is a more traditional model rocket. Now you might be saying, why do you need a video to assemble this? Well, you know, if you're an experienced rocketeer, no you don't. But maybe you got this as a gift or this is your first rocket in some way. And so uh, a little quick instruction here might be beneficial for you. After opening the box and removing the insert, this is what we have. So the rocket itself is just kind of um, rubber banded here onto the insert. All right, uh, but we'll need to install these plastic fins in order to launch it. Um, if you're not launching, you can simply attach it to this mounting base. And underneath the base here is the uh, parachute that will have to be installed. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the little rubber bands here. On the bottom of this, the, the motor retainer is holding it to the insert. So go ahead and unscrew that, and that's going to make removing this a lot easier. There we go. Okay, and we'll go ahead and find the actual instructions inside the bag with the stand here. Okay, so if you simply want to use the stand for a display, um, you can attach this, and I would usually attach it so that the launch lugs are not facing forward, as they may detract from the aesthetics of the rocket here. And then you simply attach the motor retainer here on the bottom, and that holds it into place. Okay, and then you can rotate this to however you want to to be displayed. Okay, so that's the easiest part. If you want to actually launch it though, let's go ahead and pull open the instructions. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and detach this once more from the display stand. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open up the nose cone here. Oh, a little piece of tape holding it on. Okay, the shock cord is pre-attached and is actually a pretty generous length one. That's good. Okay, one thing to check here um, is make sure the free end of this knot is not so long that it can get caught between the shoulder and the body tube there. Okay, so I'm actually going to snip that down just a little bit for safety's sake. Okay, don't cut it right next to the knot or you may end up with that knot coming unraveled. Another thing we can do here, um, also for additional safety, you just take a little bit of wood glue or white glue and put just a little tiny dot of it on there. Right, so I'm just going to put a little bit right there on the knot. Okay, Again, not a lot. I'm just going to work that into the knot a little bit there. And when that dries, that'll actually just help to keep that knot in place. Okay, now we need the parachute. And it comes in its own little bag here. Careful that you don't nick the parachute when you open it. Okay, looks like an 18 inch parachute here. Oh, shroud lines are a little knotted up though. Okay, so you may have to tease those apart. Go 
ahead and open up the chute here. Alright, and then this should be in three big loops. So one goes across the parachute, one comes up one side there, and another comes up this side. Okay, now in the instructions, it's going to show tying this onto the nose cone. Okay, and if you're going to do it that way, go ahead and take all of your loops here and on one finger. All right, and then you're going to hold the parachute by its middle and then adjust those loops until you can get all of these corners down to approximately the same point. Okay. Um, now it feels like maybe one or two of mine are not quite the same size, but I think it'll be close enough that it's not worth it to me at least to go back and change the size of the shroud lines. Okay, and then if you're going to do the tie-on method here, simply gather your loops together, pass all of those through the nose cone eyelet, okay, and kind of keep it away from the shock cord for a moment, and then you take the entire parachute, pass that through the loops there, and then just pull that down tight. Now I'm not going to pull mine down tight because I don't like to do that. Okay, if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I prefer snap swivels for my parachutes. Alright, so to do it in an alternative method here, you're going to need a snap swivel like this one. Uh, move that rocket a little more out of the way there. Okay, you can buy these in sporting goods stores or in the sporting goods department of hard, uh, hardware or department stores. Um, sometimes even at convenience stores if they have fishing stuff. Uh, and the main thing here is that the size of the snap swivel itself does not make a lot of difference. This rocket isn't that heavy. But what will make a difference is the size of the snap part itself. So when I open this up, Eventually we're going to attach it to the nose cone here. And when it goes around that eyelet, okay, that snap part has to be big enough that it can freely move around there. If it's catching, then your, your uh, snap is too small and you need a bigger snap swivel. All right, now to install this, we do kind of the same thing that we did um, with a tie-on, except you're going to tie it to the swivel loop here on the other end. So once again go ahead and find all your loops and gather those together. Okay, so gather that on one finger here and then again come down here to the other end where you're grabbing the middle of the parachute Okay, and then get all those corners down as close to each other as you can. Okay, now grab the loops up here and don't let the lengths change. So I'm always grabbing back here to make sure I don't slip the shroud lines there. And now go ahead and take the snap swivel. Okay, and you just got to thread all those loops through the hole there. All right, but this is on the swivel end, not the, the snap itself. All right, and then regather those loops here. So you got it big enough that you can pass the entire snap swivel through. Okay, and then as you pull on that, the loops are going to tie themselves onto the loop of the snap swivel. Okay, now go back. Check and make sure that you're still about the same position that you were. And as I said, this parachute's not quite even, but we're just going to go with it. Okay. Um, if you got it where you like it, um, then we'll go ahead and put a little glue on this like we did the shock cord. If you don't like it, you can just loosen the knot there, readjust the shroud line lengths, and try again. Okay. 
And here, again, you don't need a lot of glue, just enough that you can work down into the knot there. And that'll keep that from coming loose. Okay, and then this can be snapped on here. Now the advantage to this is, one, you can change parachutes quickly if you need to. And some people just like to store their parachutes separate from the rocket so they're not wadded up all the time. And also, especially on a chute where the, the shroud lines aren't quite the same length, it's going to tend to twist on its way down. And this relieves that torsion on here that, if unchecked, could wind these all the way up and collapse the chute. Okay. Now, this also has a payload compartment in it, so if you hold on to the, the shoulder here and then twist the body of the nose, that will unscrew and you can put in a altimeter or a little scientific payload, um, a bug, just nothing, no vertebrates in there. Okay, so whatever you want to send up into the atmosphere, and then just close that up again, if you're gonna, uh, either with your payload or without. Okay, and then as we go to the other end here, um, we'll go ahead and open up the flying fins. Okay, because by itself with a model rocket motor in there, um, the little stubby fins that are on the real rocket are not enough on the model to keep it stable. Okay, so when we're flying this, we go ahead and pull off the motor retainer. Okay, you'd put in a motor here. Now this is an A83. I would not fly this uh, rocket with this motor. It's not powerful enough. But I'm just using it for size. Okay, so you go ahead and stick that in there. The fins then fit over, and you can kind of line them up with the um, fins on the rocket. If they don't line up perfectly, don't worry about it. Right, and then go ahead and put the engine retainer back on. Okay, snug that down. Um, and actually, that kind of put it into a better position here. So, uh, it actually rotated so that my fins are in line with these channels here. Um, and that'll actually make it more stable because it gives you a little more advantage of the little stubby fins there as well. Okay, and then you simply put an igniter in there, get it ready to launch. This allows it to stand upright uh, very easily. Okay, now if you are assembling the whole thing for launch, you'll need probably four or five pieces of wadding to stick down inside there. And then simply take your shock cord here. Most of that will go down over the wadding. set my nose on there for a minute and move this over. For the parachute, take it and fold it into kind of a narrow triangle like that. And then take your shroud lines. I'm actually going to have to take that down where I can set it on the floor. All right. We come about halfway down the length of your shroud lines and then just pull that into a big loop up into the triangle shape here. And now I'm going to fold the two edges over the shroud lines. Okay, and then fold that over once, and then fold it lengthwise again. And now that will fit down inside the rocket. Okay, a little bit of excess shock cord there. That also goes down inside, as does my snap swivel. Now as you pack this down, Make sure that nothing gets caught between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tube there. Okay. Now, that's really, really loose. And if that's the case on your rocket, um, go ahead and add a little bit of masking tape right in this area here. Okay. Um, the way this is built, there's this gap right here. You can actually see there's some space in there. And so the, the shoulder has to account for part of that space. So if you put the 
masking tape up here on the top of the shoulder, um, which is where you usually do it on a nose cone, it's not going to have a whole lot of friction there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of masking tape. And it may take a lot. This feels really, really loose. Go ahead and put anywhere from about half a circumference to a full circumference on there, depending on how loose it is. All right, put everything back down again. Okay, it's a little better. Um, if I give it a shake like this, it's not coming out, but if I pull on it, it comes out readily. And that's the, the amount of friction we want there. Okay, so there, that rocket is ready to go. And as I said, uh, um, this is basically just a, a little bit of final assembly here. But this should launch really nicely, and I do hope you have a great launch and a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos.